Juneteenth. Juneteenth today, we're celebrating Juneteenth, a national holiday. I want to know, what is all the fuss about? What is all the fuss about? Because I think we need to start talking about reparations. Reparations. That's what we're going to talk about uh, this morning in a special edition of Morning Manor. In fact, I'm going to be doing a special edition of Morning Manor concerning Juneteenth this entire week. So now, Bishop, why won't we just do it today and uh, do something else on tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Because I think uh, there so often um, something gets the headlines, it's in the flash, it's on the social media, and the next day we've forgotten all about it. We've moved on. Not going to move on this week. Trust and believe. Not going to move on this week. We're going to deal with this issue of Juneteenth. What's the fuss all about? And today, I want to talk about reparations. Reparations. Oh, somehow or another, it's going to still flow in the whole thing that I typically do, uh, the text, the talk, and the takeaway. Uh, but I want to drill deeper, may go a little bit longer than my five minutes. Let me tell you, let me kind of cover some things that I'm going to uh, share with you this week. Let me tell you what I'm going to cover uh, this week. Uh, today, I'm going to deal with reparations. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to deal a little deeper with the history of Juneteenth. Go a little bit deeper in that. Oh, and then we're going to talk about the trauma of slavery. We're going to get into the new reconstruction. Whether you know it or not, we're in a new reconstruction right now. And for those of you who say, well, you know what, Bishop, I'm not a history buff. What are you even talking about, reconstruction? Well, let's go back to American history, and then we can get into that. The new reconstruction, because we are set dead in it right now. Right now we are. And then I'm going to deal with apology accepted apology accepted. That's how we roll in this week. Now, I want you to do a couple of things with me. I want you to hang in there with me. I want you to share this manner. And uh, I want you to really uh, make sure you put your thoughts, revelations that you get into the uh, chat area so that the cumulative effect of what we all come together as a community and discuss, other people will get it later on when they watch it. Okay, here we go. The text to talk to the takeaway. Let's talk about reparations. Come on, put that in the chat area. Reparations. We're dealing with that today. Reparations. Luke 19, 1 through 10 is the story that we're going to use. The story of Zacchaeus. It's the eighth verse that we want to land and park on and do some explanation about. Zacchaeus talking to uh, Jesus. You already know the story. He's a short man up in the tree. Jesus is coming into town can't see Jesus. He climbs a tree. He is a tax collector. Grab that. He's a tax collector. And as a result of that, he has been cheating people for some time. Notice what he says. Lord, here and now, I will give half. I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated, like you have never cheated anybody, you are a tax collector. That's what you do. I have in, I have cheated anybody, I'm going to give them four times back. Four times back. Now, there's a reason why I raised that, but let's just jump right into this. Here we are on this date. Now, please don't take this wrong. I am not talking about let's not celebrate uh, the freedom of our forefathers and therefore us. I'm not suggesting that at all. Let's celebrate. But what is a day? when you owe me reparations? Where is my 40 acres and a mule? Can you tell me? Now, now the hope is, is that I'll take this day and be okay. I don't want a holiday, I want a payday. Trust and believe. I don't want a holiday, I want a payday. You owe me. You owe me reparations. Bottom line. First thing I wanna share is the 40 acres and a mule. Where, where is it? Where is my mule and where is my 40 acres? Give you a little bit of history. 40 acres and a mule came from um, Charleston, South Carolina. In reconstruction after the defeat of the Confederates who supported slavery, well, nothing about no uh, culture, 
They wanted slavery because it supported them building their net worth. After that defeat, uh, the government that was suggested by a union general that they get 40 acres and a mule. This was in Charleston, South Carolina. This wasn't wide. You, you think that, but let's, let's get the history of 40 acres and a mule. And as a result of that, during that time, uh, one of the leading African Americans, formerly slave individuals, suggested that. But when the defeated Confederate farmers and plantation owners got hold of that, they soon came in and swept that away. It was never accepted by Lincoln. It was never accepted as a national thing that was going to do. But that's how it got into the lexicon, into the culture, into us talking about 40 acres and a mule. You cannot give me a holiday when you owe me a payday. You can't. And you say, now, Bishop, why can, why do, my people don't, don't owe you anything. Your people don't. But the government does. Because the government represented the people. For the people, by the people. You know that. Yeah, that, right there. They, the government is the one that codified slavery. So you find this in the text, and for those uh, of a conservative Christian persuasion that would say, oh no, we could never do that, but we want to go with scripture, we believe in the literacy of scripture, well, I just gave it to you. Here is Zacchaeus who says, I've been cheating people. And according to the Levitical law, I need to give back what I have been cheating them out of. So Jesus, I, I need salvation to come to my house. As a result of it coming to my house, I need to have some reparation because part of repentance is reparation. Come here, let's talk. Uh, the theology of repentance is, is that it has to be a redemption. According to the text, Jesus redeemed us. He was the reparation that was paid for our sins. So the whole idea that reparation is not a, something that we should be carrying out, well, for those who say that this country, and I am one, who say that this country was built on the Judeo-Christian standards and beliefs, there you have it right there. That's the word. Zacchaeus says, I owe them reparation because I've cheated them. So where is my 40 acres and a mule? I don't want a holiday. I want a payday. I want a payday. I'll take the day. I'll chill today. I'll grill today. But I want a payday. Here's the second thing. Here's the second thing. For those of you who will say, oh, my God, reparation. We can't do that. Well, you already did. Do you not know that slave owners got a reparation for the loss of their slaves during the emancipation and the defeat of the Confederate army? That's right. That's right. Check your history. Check your history. Those who owned our forefathers and foremothers, they got a reparation. Now, how screwed up is that? Think about it. So don't say that this is not something that, that we have done. Because we gave Japanese Americans reparation after we wrongly incarcerated them and, and put them on the side and put them behind fences because of the fear that they would rise up during World War II, which was all wrong. We already know it. They got a reparation. But guess what? Native Americans didn't get a reparation. They got a reservation. <laughs> and you know how that's turned out for them. They got a reservation. 
And that reservation has completely destroyed in many ways their community, their culture, and everything. Yeah, set them over here. Let's, let's just kind of box them off over here and let's forget about what we've done. 40 acres and a mule, uh, slave owners got uh, reparation, but we didn't. So don't tell me that it can't, can't happen. And here's the third thing. The third thing is this, net worth, net worth. Net worth was built for families, for businesses, and for this country in the 200 plus years we were enslaved. And it was built on the back of black people. It was built on the backs of black people. So net worth is the total of all of my assets and my liabilities minus equals my net worth. That is something that is built over time. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. So then, Bishop, why then should we receive reparations? Why should uh, people who had nothing to do with slavery give us anything? Because the net worth of this country was built on the backs of blacks. So therefore, the government should do some kind of reparation. I always get this response from my, my white colleagues, my white brothers and sisters in the Lord, and they raise this issue. Well, it wasn't my parents. It wasn't. It wasn't, and I'm not even talking about your parents. I'm not. Settle down, calm down. I'm not accusing your parents of anything. I'm talking about the codification of the government. We the people, by the people, for the people. That's the government. The government codified slavery. The government took two and a half years to get to Galveston, Texas, to say you're free. That's the government. So therefore, if the government represents all of the people, then it should then do something on behalf of all of the people. I'm not trying to kick dust in the face of uh, my neighbors and my cul-de-sac. I'm not. Don't have time for that. What I'm trying to do is speak to the fact that the government was on behalf, did these kinds of things. And therefore, the network of the government was built. Therefore, there should be some reparation. So as I said at the very beginning, this ain't about no holiday, fine, chill and grill. But at the end of the day, I need a payday, not a holiday. And to give me a day off of work, eight hours off, and I'm supposed to be happy with that. The devil is a liar, mm -mm, not at all. So what does this look like? Take away, what does this takeaway look like? This takeaway looks like this. Three things that I really believe should be a part of a reparation to the descendants of slave, formerly slave, enslaved people. Low interest business loans. Low interest business loans. Yeah, do underwriting, do what you need to do, but there should be low interest business loans. I'll tell you a reason in, and after I share these three things. Free education, free um, post-secondary education, okay? And the third thing, low interest home loans, low interest home loans. A day off, a holiday, we need a payday. Now why those three things? Because those are the three keys to building net worth in this country. Those are the three keys to building net worth in this country. This is a capitalistic country. I'm very proud to have worn the uniform of this country for 21 and a half years, lived all over the world, drug my family through some of everything to serve my country, love this country, but trust and believe there needs to be reparations. And in a capitalistic country that we have, there are three ways in which you can build your net worth. 
your own business, having the education, and owning your own home. There's only a few ways that you can build up a legacy net worth. You can't work for somebody else. You got to work for yourself, own your own business. You got to take the net worth out of your home and do something with it. And you have to grab a hold of the fact that you have to make wise investments. That's what I'm talking about in reparations, but I'm going to be dealing with <clears throat> this whole thing about Juneteenth all week long, all week long. Not going to move from it, not going to something else tomorrow because that's what we like to do. Social media, yeah, okay, let, you know, this was hot today, something else is tomorrow. No, this is an issue that we have to talk about and have a discussion. So we're going to deal with the history, we're going to deal with the trauma of slavery, we're going to deal with the new reconstruction that we're in right now and apology accepted. You want to come along with me? Come along with me this week when we talk about Juneteenth. And today, what's the fuss about? Grateful for the holiday, baby, but I need a payday. If this bless you, bless somebody else. Share it. Don't keep it to yourself. I'll see you tomorrow morning with more special edition of Morning Manor. 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. God bless you. Bye.